Hi there, and welcome. I'm Dr. Cyanide, and this is my overly intricate Iron Man project. This update video is a few months delayed from what I wanted, and a large part of that is I ran into an error, you know, thought I got it mostly fixed, and then I ran into another problem, and kept it kept creeping, and I wanted to end a video that was great and on a high note, and I lost sight of what I really want to do with this channel, which is share what I learn with anyone watching so that they have an easier time making a suit. Um, but things have been going well, I have a lot to share. I'm going to try to change up what I do a little bit in this video to make it faster and easier to go with, but anyway, I hope you enjoy. One of the things I did was to work on an electronics test using one of my old forearm designs. I had an Arduino that I needed to solder the pins on. That went pretty well. I found out that if you have to solder your own pins on, use a small gauge solder. I originally tried to use a thicker gauge solder and it was just bad. Then it, it was sticking between the pins, not good. But the Arduino stuff was actually very fun. I have a 16 channel PWM controller that I talked to you from the Arduino using I squared C, which is written I 2 C if you're trying to look it up for your own project. And that worked really well. I got a simple motorized forearm test to work. Um, it, yeah, it was fun. I look forward to doing more with the electronics. In my previous update, I showed a curved forearm design, and I liked how the latch worked, but the rest of it really didn't seem like something that would be maintainable or would hold up well. I decided that I was going to redesign that, and I spent several months doing that redesign. And at first, when you look at this design, it looks really cool. It looks like I got really close. But the more I progressed, the more I found places where ideas would conflict with one another. Where I would realize that I was mounting the rocket servos in the same place where I needed the hinge for the panel doors to be moving. And so over time it just became too many errors. Um, I'm still relatively new to Fusion 360, and so I had I would go to change a parameter and it would break my entire file. Not good. Uh, so in the end, this design had to be scrapped. I also hit the point where I realized that there's no way I can just build a frame first and design an exterior forearm shell to fit it. I'm going to need to do a shell first design and then position the servos to fill that design. There was another short-lived forearm update where I again started with kind of a circular base and it at least looked prettier but it had a lot of the same problems as the one I just showed you. So I am currently in on the lookout for a good shell design. I do not like the forearm for the Mark VI on Thingiverse, so I'm going to need to either make my own and figure out how to use Blender or keep searching. Some other related updates, I purchased an Artillery Sidewinder X1. That will be my suit printing machine of choice. Before this, I was using a Monoprice Select Mini, which was part of my reason for doing intricate mechanics first, is I just did not have the build volume to build large chunks of the suit. While looking for a forearm model, I came to DO3D's website and realized that they were having a few freebies. One of those was the Mark II helmet, and I decided, you know what, I want to do a helmet, I want to mechanize it, I want to put it in a heads-up display, I want to try some different eyepiece things, may as well give it a shot. And so I started printing it, and it printed out okay, but there's a lot of little things with this file that I really don't like. It doesn't feel like it aligns very well. For example, the back part of the helmet doesn't have a good way to really latch in place to where it feels like, yes, this is secure, this isn't going to slide out. The earpieces also don't have a good way to, they don't like click in to really lock in in a good orientation and feel secure. Even the face faceplate doesn't feel like it aligns properly. Part of the faceplate might have been fixable with my slicer settings, but it just 
the whole model felt very much like it was designed for looks in 3D first, rather than to actually be worn. I've heard this is a problem with older DO 3D models, and so perhaps this Mark II helmet is just one of their old ones, and newer helmets don't have this issue, but it was still a bit of a disappointment to go through. Still, I'm going to try to finish this helmet and see how it looks on me. I figure it'll be good practice to try sanding and filling in holes. I'm a complete beginner when it comes to finishing 3D printed works. Most of the time I've just left them as the raw print and called that good enough. One of the tips that I saw was to print the helmet in a bowl shape so that you use less support, but it requires a lot more sanding and cleanup on the outside as a result. I'm using a handheld power sander, trying to move it around a lot so that it doesn't heat up the plastic too much in any one place. As I was doing this, I could feel some places where I was lingering perhaps a little bit too long and the plastic was getting warm, but I think it turned out okay in the end. I'm using wood filler to try to fill in some of the gaps. I've heard that having a black surface underneath a paint job can really make it pop, especially for metallic looking paints. So that's why I decided to go with a black primer. I still want to print my suit in a silvery color if possible, just so that if there is any bigger groove or gash that goes below the paint that it at least somewhat looks like battle damage instead of neon green. When I said I was going to finish a video regardless of how perfect or imperfect it was, I had at least thought that I was going to get a silver helmet by the end. I knew I wasn't going to get all the mechanics in, and I knew I probably wasn't going to have a perfect paint job, but I wasn't expecting this level of warping. <laughs> uh, well... Note to anyone else, don't leave PLA in the sun when you've painted it black. Yeah, I thought that it would just be a hot car type thing that would mess with PLA. I... I did not think it would go this bad. Um, I know I did the conversion and the temperature outside was only like... I think it was 37 degrees Celsius. Which you figure you're printing at a... Well, I printed this at 190 degrees Celsius. I know from experience that it is very malleable on a heated bed that's at 60 degrees Celsius. But I figured that still gave me like a 10 degrees Celsius leeway. And it didn't. So I uh, will know not to do that next time. And hopefully you'll know not to do that next time either. Uh, well, learn from my mistakes, and it's still, e even if it is a bit of a setback, it's satisfying chasing your dreams, even if it's a small step at a time. So, I encourage you to do that, and stay safe out there. See ya.